Welcome again, everyone, to uh, the group exhibit for hydrogen fuel cells and batteries uh, here at the Hanover Fair 2016. Uh, my name is Michael Sinclair, and I'm joining you again on the stage to be the moderator for the next discussion. Uh, I would like to uh, invite you to uh, please have a seat. There's complimentary beverages. I hope you're aware of that, and uh, please enjoy the next talk. Um, I'll be fielding questions at any time. Please don't hesitate to put up a hand and uh, let me know. I'll bring the microphone to you uh, if you have any questions. Uh, today's topic is entitled The Enafield Project, Empowering Energy Consumers Through Fuel Cell Micro CHP. That's combined heat and power. Uh, joining me on the stage is the head of product management system products from the Valent Group. Uh, this is Alexander Downsteiner. Please welcome him to the stage. All right, um, so uh, as far as by way of introduction, um, I was hoping you could please start by introducing us to the Enafield program mm -hmm. uh, and what it entails and what the goals are. Yeah, straightforward. So the Enafield program is um, the biggest and I think most important demonstration program for Michael CHP fuel cells so far. Uh, we had a predecessor, for example, in Germany, which was called Kalux, still running, but uh, in the last phase of its um, uh, duration. And Enefield is really working on a European-wide level to distribute this technology and these products into several European markets. So we are operating in 11 uh, member states in Europe uh, with a group of manufacturers and utilities and scientific organizations in Europe in order to transfer this technology and these products now in the in the different markets. So it's a big demonstration program, first of all, funded by the joint undertaking for hydrogen fuel cells in Europe um, and uh, supported by a lot of uh, organizations. We are 26. Um, at the end, we are aiming for about uh, 1,000 micro CHP fuel cells uh, in the Inifield program in different markets. And what is, the, what is the reason for this collaboration? Why does it exist? Uh, the simplest answer is that we are not able to let's say, uh, really transfer this technology after, uh, I, I would say, two decades of, of development now into the markets, um, every one of each uh, on our own base. So we need to collaboration at a certain level because it's important that new innovative technologies are transferred in the markets as there is a lot of, uh, let's say, support necessary also to develop the markets, to be really uh, safe uh, with regards that the products are developed really fits to the market so we need uh, a justification and a, let's say a demonstration of the feasibility of those products that these really fits to the markets the experience we had so far in any field is a very good experience uh, we have a great customer uh, satisfaction here the customer are still asking for additional systems so this is not a, a really a risk but a collaboration at a certain level is absolutely necessary to develop in particular the markets. So every one of each uh, manufacturer has its own product, so it's evident, but uh, in the cooperation it's is important to, to develop the markets, to prove the technologies in the different markets, to convince also our stakeholders in the different European member states, uh, as new technologies always need um, substantial funding in order to get into the volume. So we are talking about uh, fuel cell micro CHPs, combined yeah. heat and power. Um, do all of the participants in the group, do they all bring the same technology to the table? No, we have, uh, we have different technologies. So uh, we are starting for low temperature PEM, for example, with Elco in Munich. We have uh, high temperature SOFC, we have um, uh, the high temperature PEM is Elco, the low temperature PEM, for example, is Fisman already in the consortium and, and other. So there's a wide range, let's say, all the applicable technologies which you can find in the segment of micro CHP fuel cells for residential and small commercial application you can find in the Enifield program um, because 
each of these te different technologies has its advantage and disadvantage. So there is no technology which you can say, this is the technology for micro CHP field size. So, um, and I'm convinced all of these technologies has, uh, has its chance to go into the market. So we have a wide portfolio of products in any field as well. And uh, from the consumer side, who are these early adopters of micro CHP? Um, yeah, to give a short answer, this um, could be all the people now supporting these kind of demonstrations. So it's, um, it's always, and this is not only uh, systematic related to, to fuel cells, but it's always a challenge to industrialize new technology. So, um, um, relatively clear is that new technologies can be successfully and fully competitive compared to old-fashioned or state-of-the-art technologies, by the way, which got in the past a substantial funding. Even the condensing boiler was introduced in the market by substantial funding uh, and all other technologies as well, because the main obstacle at the moment, the main barrier is to really reach volume. So. Um, these volumes is, uh, or are, is, are only possible if you have substantial funding, and the funding itself is possible if you have two volumes. So the volumes creates, first of that, uh, these innovative uh, customers, so early adapters, innovative customers, uh, lead users, which we call sometimes in the industry, which really creates a startup market. And this is something which we have already in the Calux program in Germany, but also with the systems we have installed in Enifield. By the way, we reached nearly 500 in the meantime in Enifield, so we make huge progress in the installation of these systems after a certain time of, uh, let's say, starting up the program to be more aware in the market that the people recognize there's a big demonstration program in Europe, I can apply for that. Uh, we have now reached a fundamental number of systems in the market, which confirms, I think, uh, again, that the, um, the customer satisfaction is, is very high. The customers are very satisfied with the features of the systems. They like the systems. They like the advantages they get from um, not only for the first um, early adapters and innovative customers, but also more and more customers which are, for example, only interested in lowering the, the energy costs. For example. And so is it, <clears throat> these are the, your, uh, a typical homeowner, is that who it is yeah. or is it a business owner? Yeah. It's both, so we have in, in the Calux programs, as I said, really a wide range of portfolio. Uh, so we are starting, as you said, um, with a customer of an, of an one family or two family home. This is a residential segment with a lot of products in the field. Um, we have but also um, companies like Solid Power, which have uh, two products. Uh, one is the blue chain, which is more related to the small commercial business, uh, especially interesting for small hotels, butchers, bakeries, sauna, something like that, wellness. Um, um, and, and this is a this is a B2B market more or less, small one, but uh, very very successful company, which is also um, part of Enifield. So we we have the majority of products in the segment of residential. CHP fuel cells, but also um, at least two to three products in the segment of uh, small commercial. So, at um, so the goal of the Enfield program, I believe, is to install a thousand systems in the field. Yeah, um, that's a substantial number to demonstrate the technology. But what at what um, deployment capacity? Would you expect that these systems would be able to compete in an unsubsidized way with conventional yeah. power? Um, I think the every and this is important. This is important to to understand every huge number of technology and huge number of products has started with the very first unit. It's clear, and the challenge for the industry at the moment is to to get into a phase where really technologies and products are competitive against uh, existing or previous products which a customer have today or um, in, the, in the past without any funding. And the, the question is only, and this is the challenge itself, it's not, not so simple, to, to have the right approach for route to market. And the route to market from my point of view can only be if the early adapters will be supported as they're also taking a first innovative role in the market uh, by subsidy programs like the Unifield program, like the German program Calux, which was in the past uh, very successfully uh, and to be followed. And this was also a very important outcome of the most important study in the segment of stationary fuel cells from Roland Berger last year. 
uh, and they tell, told, and it's it's very substantial for the energy union in Europe to have these decentralized high efficient systems in a future role of the energy system. But on the other side, they also recognize um, that these systems at the moment are too cost expen too, too expensive. So we have a very good um, operational um, levelized cost of energy benefit already. So it's, in a, from an operational point of view, very attractive for the end customer, but you, you mentioned it, the investment costs are too high. So my conviction is that if we follow the path on the European level, and I'm working also as a representative of the industry at Hydrogen Europe, which um, is a part of the joint undertaking in Brussels for hydrogen and fuel cells, if we follow now the pathway, which we have together developed in the industry, but also with, uh, with the Commission in Brussels. Um, following these demonstration programs, set up new member states funding for the first, I would say, 50 to 70,000 units. For example, in Germany, we have started this process and we are waiting for, for the release of these uh, market incentive program. Then it makes sense, and then I think this is the final step in order to really to be competitive. And my estimation is that for the German market at least, which is the lead market at the moment, if we are now finalized the technology implementation program by the Ministry of Economics, then I think we have the fundamental base in order to be successful in about five to seven years without any funding. And the uh, big advantage of fuel cells as a technology here is that they are really very easy scalable. So the industrialization with a high a level of automatization of the process, the industry manufacturing process, is, is a very simple thing. It's only a question of when is the right time to invest significant number of investments uh, for automatization processes. And um, this needs certainty, and this certainty comes also in this phase at the moment from the policy because the clear statement, for example, from Enefield, from the Commission, but also from the uh, subsidy programs from the from the markets as the member states, for example, Germany as the lead market, gives certainty for the manufacturers, for all the investors in the stakeholder supply chain, but also for the customers at the end. So again, for the consumer, uh, how does the consumer learn about the technology? How do they quantify the benefit of such a system in their home? Mm -hmm. How do they become educated consumers? Yeah. Um, to be honest, we, we do not need to educate consumers. Uh, what we have learned in the past 10 years already during the lot of demonstration and field trials uh, at the beginning is that they are very interested in these technologies. So fuel cells have a very, let's say, good um, reputation. reputation. Yeah, you're right. Um, and this reputation supports a bit the introduction. This is a very innovative technology compared to others. Um, but we can also uh, base that on existing feeders we have uh, got from the, from the field trials and demonstration programs and the products which are already in the market. Um, that the benefits for the customer are mainly two points, or let's say three. The first one is, and this is certainly the most important one, they can significantly reduce the energy bill. If you produce electricity in your home or in your uh, small commercial application, you can reduce your energy costs by at least 700 to 1,000, maybe more, euros per year. This is a significant uh, amount of money. That's the first thing. The second thing is that they have a strong wish to become more and more independently from the energy supplier like municipalities or utilities uh, because they see um, they roll more and more also with regards to more decentralized energy systems in the future. And this leads me to my third and last point. We also recognize the strong interest of the customers to become a player as one of the, let's say, innovative customers in the German Energiewende, for example. It's, it's not only a question of money, it is, sure, it has to be cheaper at the end from a total cost of ownership perspective than previous products, but they have also a big interest to be one of the players I have supported actively by my product in my home, the German Energiewende or the Energy Union in, in Europe. And this is something which is very nice because um, if, you, if you have those customers, you can really convince others, and this is important in the next step, to become a wider approach into the market as the experiences from the first innovative customers is a very positive one. 
and that's very good. Are there publicly available tools for quantifying the savings that a customer would expect to get out of this uh, technology? Uh, we have not not even tools. We have we have uh, I don't know 1,500 systems, sure. maybe more in Europe. Um, and what I can say, I can only speak, for example, for my company, uh, Weiland. We have now uh, 150 systems in Enefield. We have uh, about 120 systems installed in Kalux in Germany. And what we can say is that uh, the, the savings uh, for the end customer um, with, the, with our system, the SOFC uh, 800 and now 700 watt nominal power output system, is about 700 to 1,000 euro a year. Uh, which leads to a CO2 reduction of at least 35% compared to old technologies. And I think this is something which uh, really the customer um, is interested in, in lowering the energy costs. The, the problem at the moment is, is only, the remaining problem is only the high investment costs which can be reduced by significant funding programs. And I'm very convinced if the program now, for example, in Germany starts and we are successfully competing the, the Enfield program and our systems are completely sold out, so we have installed every system, um, then I think uh, we can also manage the last period of this marathon race. Yeah? We are in the stadium now, but the finish is, we, we can see it. Uh, but it needs strong uh, commitment also from the industry and also from all the stakeholders now to go the last mile of, the, of this marathon race. But as I said, we have not only uh, tools, we have, uh, yeah, we as Weiland and uh, Inifield in total and in the German industry, we have uh, at least 1,000 to 1,500 um, very convinced customers who, who has already gained the experience that this made a, a lot of benefit to them. Are there any audience questions at this time? Okay, no. I have one other question for you, yeah. and um, it's that I, I've read that CHP, micro CHP, um, can be used uh, when it's distributed for grid stabilization. Mm -hmm. um, so how does that work, and how does a customer benefit from that uh, feature of the technology? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Enefield and, and the products in Enefield understands as well as a major contribution to the energy union in Europe. And this is a very smart thing, uh, because all the appliances are connected to a smart grid solution, so all the appliances can be operated in principle and also actively. We have done it in, in, in Calux already, but also in Enefield with, an, with a smart grid approach. That means if, for example, when energy breaks down in Europe and we need a lot of decentralized high-efficient fuel cells, the grid operator can say via remote control, Please, all the fuel cells should go now in uh, a nominal power output and not in, uh, in a part load uh, behavior. And then all the fuel cells contribute to the stabilization of the grid, for example. And this without negative impacts for the customer. Um, this leads to, I think, at least saving costs for the utility because if they have to buy from the stock exchange from Leipzig, for example, in the German market, uh, very expensive electricity. It's, it's much more intelligent to buy them from these decentralized customers and if they can contribute and, and be, be part of this business model and, and gaining benefits from them, we have a classical win-win situation because the utility saves costs, uh, because the, the price for that is much lower than from the stock exchange, for example, and if they also contribute and, and participate and include the customer, which they do, uh, they can also earn a lot of money or a, a little bit of money uh, during the midday, for example, if they are willing to say, okay, my uh, personal micro CHP fuel cell system in Enfield is part of this bigger um, smart grid. And this is a very, uh, very interesting and very, yeah, still in the beginning, we have tried it, it works. Um, it's depending now on the different business models in Europe, but uh, in principle, it's a very smart solution, I think. Very good. So, uh, for more information, of course, uh, you can find Alexander at his booth, which is booth E51. Uh, there's another talk following, so don't go anywhere. The uh, next talk is entitled Hydrogen as Fuel Speeds Up uh, with Marcus Backmeyer of Linda Group. And uh, I'd like all of you to help me uh, thank Alexander for joining me here on stage uh, and uh, entertaining this excellent discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.